Hey, what's going on Renaissance Lifers? Welcome back to Renaissance Life TV, where we take life to a whole new level, tackling topics of personal growth and success with a different perspective on navigating life and relationships. On today's show, we're talking about is reading books a waste of time? If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you haven't yet subscribed, but you love videos on personal growth and success and taking your life to a new level, then hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like and follow me on all of my social media platforms. My name is Lee and I'm the host of Renaissance Life TV. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so today we're talking about is reading books a waste of time? Now in the age of Google, Wikipedia, and the internet in general, in the age of fast information, does it really make sense to still be reading books or to still be looking for information in books when you're looking for information? And so I'll just cover Google, Wikipedia, and the internet in general, and whether or not they even are valuable sources for information. And I think the answer is yes. I mean, I think anybody can recognize and admit that the internet is a phenomenal resource for information. Wikipedia, the Google, as it's called, is a great place to find information, especially when you're looking for information quickly. I mean, places like YouTube and other platforms are also great places for information, particularly when you want tutorials or to learn how to do something and have somebody demonstrate it to you without having to be in front of that person. YouTube is phenomenal for that because you can watch them on video, just like you're watching me here today. Now where Google and the internet really stand out is in the area of fast information. And what I mean by that is if you need to know what is the measurement or the conversion rate between a cup or a pint, you know, a foot versus a meter, Google is a phenomenal place for that. You probably don't want to have to be searching or rummaging through several books to try to find a math book maybe and a conversion chart and try to find where the conversions are in order for you to have something to reference. It's much easier to just pull out your phone, take a peek at it, type it in on Google and you have the answer in a quick second. And so that's where Google really shines and outshines books in my opinion. And so I believe that Google, the internet, Wikipedia, and all these sources really have their place. But if I'm honest, I don't think that Google, the internet, and all those sources have the same place as books have. Books have their unique place. And so where do books outshine the internet, uh, Wikipedia, and all those other digital sources? Books really outshine those digital sources in the area of learning, long-term learning, deep learning, and major change. Now, yes, it's true that by watching a YouTube video, you can be inspired and learn something, but I think that books are still the best way of getting information in one area that's compiled, that's concise, maybe not concise, but it's all in one area. I think one of the difficulties with the internet is that information is so spread out and it's so varied that it can be really hard to sift through it all. Now the great thing about books is that books are generally already laid out for you. Things are put in order, usually a logical order that you can follow in order to accomplish something. So most books have a purpose. Either they're trying to describe a philosophy or a theory and get you to believe something, or they're seeking to explain and teach something. And so one of the things that I think is really unique about books is that they are still by far the largest repository of knowledge and information in the world. As large as Google and all those things are, you still have all the greats. I mean, you name them in any industry, in every sphere, they're still putting out books. There's still something called the New York Times bestseller. There's not the Google Times bestseller. And that's because people still go to books for information, for life change, for life skills. If they want to learn languages, you still use books oftentimes. Our schools still predominantly use books. I think it's no coincidence too that many of the really great and successful people that you look at in this world right now and in America 
are people who either read books regularly or read voraciously. A lot of the greats, the billionaires, the millionaires, the people who have figured out how to make it, the people who have figured out how to crush a certain industry or to disrupt a certain niche or market, they're people who generally read books. And I've observed that in my own life. I've observed people who by all accounts were normal, regular people just kind of going to and fro. And somehow they picked up on reading books and they started to read. They changed their lives significantly and drastically, dramatically. They're almost unrecognizable from who they were two, three years ago. And it really doesn't take long. And I think a big part of that is books lend you perspective, right? They lend you the perspective of other people, so they make you well-rounded in that sense, but they're also a great place to find information. And why is that? Let me unpack that a little bit for you. So in my own life, I always had a dream of writing a book kind of as this esoteric, really cool thing that maybe I could do in the future. And so I always had this thought, it'd be nice to write a book. And I think a lot of people think to themselves, if I could write a book, that'd be kind of cool. I will say that at a certain point in my life, once I felt that I had accomplished something and I understood something, the next thing that I felt was that I wanted to share that. There's something really unique about reaching a certain place and most of us are concerned about leaving a legacy, either teaching someone, not dying with the information you have. And that's the power with a book. And for most people, when they reach a place where they either reach some success or figured or discovered something out, they generally want to put it down in some written form. And so there's a lot of power in writing. So if you look back as far as you can think about, probably the greatest innovation and development of all time was writing and the ability to keep down information from one generation to another. So if you think about before being able to write things down or have books, if I discovered something in my generation and I didn't get a chance to tell my grandchild or my child, then that information was lost. Now with the ability to write things down, my grandchild, my great, 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 great grandchild can read a book or something that I wrote in my generation, in my time, and they already have that head start. They can start from where I left off instead of having to start over again and reinvent the wheel. And that's really the power of books. People who reach certain levels and reach areas of success generally want to put that information down and they generally want to share that information because it's just something that I truly believe happens when you reach a certain level. Now, yes, there are people who simply write books because they want to make money. But I'll say even in my case, when I wrote my book, ultimately I wanted to influence and impact people. I wanted to share and give back in some tangible way that would remain here after I was long gone. And of course, I wanted to make money, right? So nothing we do, we want to simply do. I wanted the book to be successful, and part of that was hopefully that it would also make money. So it's kind of a win-win in that sense. I'm able to share that information, and people buy it for a small fee, and I'm able to continue to live my life and to be able to have money to, to live and consist of, right? So I think, quite frankly, that the answer to is reading books a waste of time, especially in 2020 and 2021, is that no, they are not. Particularly if you want to make a major shift in your life, if you want to really learn something, grasp something, get financially free, build a business, whatever it is, books are still, I believe, the number one source of information inspiration and will give you the ability to transform your life. And so I'll give you maybe two examples of that. One of the books that significantly changed my life was Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Now there are a lot of other things that he puts out there that don't haven't necessarily inspired me or intrigued me or interested me, but that book in particular really codified and put into words some of the things that I was feeling and the way that I was thinking. And so when I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, I went from having maybe a theory or a thought of something that I wanted to do or something that might be out there to having some tangible sense and some really written out ways 
of being able to accomplish it or to accomplish the mindset that would get me there. The other thing is reading books and seeing the words on paper has a way of imprinting it in your mind. So it's much easier to recall and it makes a much stronger impression on your psyche and your subconscious. So that way the, th the things that you read really start to imprint your mind and change you from the inside out and you become a different person. You speak differently, you act differently and all those things as well. So I think there are three reasons why people generally write books. And so there may be more, but I think the main three reasons why people write books is one, to make money, two, to change other people's minds, and three, to leave a legacy. So when you read a book, understanding that books and written material, the written word, really has the most power to change and influence your mind. If you understand that, then you go into reading books with a sober mind, with a good understanding. Not everything you read obviously is true. And much of what you read, just as much of what you watch, has an opinion. It has something that it's trying to get you to believe, understand, or change your mind about. So having said that, knowing that books are written for several reasons, I've read books, you know, by some major authors out there who are doing billions in real estate and things like that. And I read the book and it was obvious that the book was simply made to make money. In other words, nothing was revealed in the book. It was just talking around and around in circles. And then there are the books that are trying to get you to change your mind, your perception, or your mindset about something, your belief system, your philosophy. There are those books out there as well, which can be good to read as well. And finally, the books that I love the most are the books that are written trying to leave a legacy. In other words, it's someone who's reached a certain point, discovered something, like I said before, and they just want to leave that behind. They don't want to die without that. And I think pride does play into that. As humans, we're prideful beings and we want to leave a legacy. We want to be remembered beyond our death. And that's one of the most powerful ways of being remembered beyond death especially since death is something that none of us, at least until this point, has been able to overcome. Yes, you can make a video like this, but digital things break, they get erased, the internet goes down and it falters, or the memory card you had it on, it dies, and then you don't have that information. But a book is a physical medium where that kind of stays. The books that I love to read are the books where it's obvious that someone is trying to leave a legacy and wants to be remembered for having done something, accomplished something, taught something, or been the best at something. And those are the people that I generally want to learn from. So I would challenge you as we round to the close of 2020, we're now in, in November, and we're going into 2021, that you make a goal to read a certain number of books, whether you're gonna start with one book, and maybe think about what area that you would like to read about. Is it romance? Is it finance? Is it self-growth or personal development? Some area to read a book to try to transform your life in that area. Maybe you want to work on your time management skills or your business skills or your budgeting skills. Whatever it is, try to find something that you can read to develop in that area. And I think you'll be really amazed with the results. So is it worth reading books today? I say yes. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like content like this, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and smash that like button. And before I end, I'd love to hear from you. Do you believe that reading books is a waste of time today? Is it still worth reading books in 2020, 2021 and beyond? Or do you think that there are better ways of getting your information or other ways that can be used as well as reading books? Please comment in the comment section below. And until next time, I'm wishing you health and happiness. Cheers.